Welcome to part 1 of phase rule. In this part we are going to discuss various terms involved in a phase rule. Thus, what is phase rule? For the system in equilibrium, sum of number of phase and number of degrees of freedom is equal to sum of number of component and 2. Mathematically, P plus F is equal to C plus 2 is a phase rule. P is number of phases, F is number of degrees of freedom and C is a number of component. Okay, so sum of number of phases and degrees of freedom of the system is equal to sum of number of component and 2. So this is the statement of phase rule. Or one can say, that the sum of number of phase and number of degrees of freedom is greater than number of components by 2 because you see here by adding 2 to the right hand side that left hand side and right hand side becomes equal. That means P plus F is greater than C by 2. Now there are three terms involved in a phase rule. We will discuss one by one. First term is a phase. A homogeneous, physically distinct and mechanically separable portion of the system, which is separated from other such a part of system by definite boundary surface is known as a phase. In order to understand this definition, let us take an example in which oil is mixed with a water. Now see here. There are two homogeneous part in this heterogeneous system. Remember, homogeneous means well mixed. But since these two portion are not well mixed, that means there are two homogeneous parts in this heterogeneous system. Now these two are having different physical properties like boiling point, refractive index, density, etc. By some means, we can separate these two as you know by using separating panel. We can separate these two portions. Now see these two homogeneous portions are separated by a definite boundary. So in this way in this heterogeneous system there are two homogeneous portions which are physically distinct, mechanically separable and separated by definite boundary. So here we can say that there are two phases. Now if two gases that is H2 and N2 are mixed. Now due to this mixing there is a formation of single homogeneous mixture. That's why this is known as a one phase system. If glucose is added to water then it constitutes a single phase because glucose is soluble in water. So in this way this is all about this first term that is phase. Second term involved in a phase rule is a component. The minimum number of variable constitute by means of which the composition of each phase can be expressed by means of chemical equation is known as components. In order to understand this definition, let us take an example of water which is in equilibrium with ice and water vapor. So you can write ice is in equilibrium with water and water is equilibrium with water vapor. So here there are three phases, ice that is solid phase, water that is liquid phase and water vapor that is gaseous phase. Now this solid phase that is ice is having chemical composition H2O. Water phase that is liquid it is also having chemical formula H2O. And water vapor that is gaseous phase it is also having chemical formula H2O. So all these three phases having chemical equation or chemical composition as H2O. So we can say that here number of component is 1. So in order to describe the composition of each phase only one chemical equation is required that's why here number of component is 1. 
so the minimum number of variable constitute by means of which the composition of each phase can be expressed by means of chemical equation is known as component so the minimum number of variable yani equations jiski wajah se हम हर फेस का केमिकल कंपोजिशन बता पाएंगे जैसे वाटर में सिर्फ H2O ये एक केमिकल इक्वेशन से हम हर फेस डेट इज आइस वाटर वेपर इसका केमिकल कंपोजिशन बता सकते हैं इस वजह से यहाँ पर नंबर ऑफ कंपोनेंट वन है थर्ड टर्म एसोसिएटेड विथ फेज रूल इज ए डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम और वेरियंसी इट इज मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल सच एज टेम्परेचर प्रेशर एंड कंपोजिशन which must be fixed in order to define system completely in order to understand this definition let us take an example of ideal gas equation pv is equal to rt now see if each term are known in this equation we can say that this equation is completely defined now here if pressure is known then volume and temperature are unknown that means by knowing single pressure similarly simple volume or temperature this equation is not defined but if we know pressure and volume then temperature can be calculated or if you know volume and temperature then we can calculate pressure or if we know pressure and temperature we can calculate volume because r is a constant that means by knowing any two term this equation is completely defined similarly by knowing all these three terms that is pressure volume and temperature that equation is completely defined so minimum number of terms in order to define equation completely are two three are maximum and two that is nothing but minimum so that's why here number of degrees of freedom r2 so the minimum number of variable which must be fixed in order to define system completely is nothing but number of degrees of freedom this is another definition of degrees of freedom sum of coordinate required to locate position of point in space is known as degrees of freedom now let us take a point on this line so in order to locate position of this point only one coordinate is required that means if we say that x is equal to 1 then this point is here if we say that x is equal to 3 that means that point is here so in this way in order to locate position of point on line only one coordinate is required that's why we can say that here number of degrees of freedom is 1 now suppose that this point is in plane now here if we say x is equal to 1 then this point may be here may be here or may be here because all these three position x is equal to 1 if we say that y is equal to 1 then this point may be here may be here or may be here also because here value of y is equal to 1 but if we say x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 now position of point is fixed that's why we can say that here number of degrees of freedom are 2 because two cartesian coordinates are required in order to locate position of point similarly if this point is now suppose in space now if that point is in space then there is a requirement of three coordinates in order to locate position of point that is x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate if we know only x and y coordinate then that point goes into xy plane so in order to locate position of point in space three coordinates are required that is x y z that's why here degrees of freedom are 3 remember degrees of freedom are independent of values it is depend on the number of coordinates so whatever the value of coordinate that is immaterial 
so how many are the number of coordinate so that is nothing but the degrees of freedom thank you for watching this video